computer. Uh, let me go over a quick uh, household kind of uh, uh, comments before we start with the presentations. We have two presenters, uh, wonderful presenters today. So what I'll do, I'll try, I'll start to share, um, share screen and I'll go to the presentation over here. Uh, then I'll make that, I hope, I hope you see something. Yep. yep. Okay. So let me minimize the participants. So here we are. So we have two wonderful presenters today, Melanie and Roger. A uh, couple of uh, household uh, thing. Uh, the presentation each will take 10 minutes. Uh, I'll ask you to mute yourself uh, while the presenter is going through the presentation. Um, at the end of each presentation, we'll have five minutes for Q&A. Um, the presentations are self-paced, meaning that the presenter tells me when to advance the slides and I diligently will advance the slide one after the other. I again, I will have uh, five minutes of Q&A afterwards. And at the end of the second presentation, we'll open up to a generic general discussion uh, as long as you want. There will be a nine minute reminder uh, that you have one more minute to wrap up. And um, that's about it. So without any further delay, let me present you the first presenter for today, Melanie. Melanie, um, are you ready? Sure. <laughs> okay, so you tell me when to advance, okay? Yeah, this is a good okay. one. Okay. Here yep. we go, your first slide. Go um, for it. Okay, thank you so much um, for uh, having me do a presentation. I'm really pleased to be part of the pilot whoops go back mm, yeah um so let me start the the title slide is i'm gonna take us all on a brief voyage to um, Tus <laughs> tuscany um italy and um where there are marble workshops and bronze foundries that have existed for centuries they're where michelangelo worked and um a Raphael and in my work are very similar. Whoops. And um, so, and the other thing that is so phenomenal is that they use these ancient materials and create modern expressions. And when you're over there, you're surrounded by these old buildings that speak to you of history. And it's just a, an incredible experience. So, um, here, whoops, oh, I can't advance it. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna try and advance it. Okay. There you uh, go. Yeah, thank you. So here we are. We're flying into, I fly into Pisa. I've, I've gone to Italy um, a number of times to uh, different um, times in my life. And the first time I went over was in 1970. And I actually took, um, uh, um, a boat across the Leonardo da Vinci. And um, back then I was just a very innocent, naive young college graduate. And uh, I had been told to be careful when I was around Italy because the women weren't allowed out on the street by themselves. The only time they could be out there was for like the promenade, like around four o'clock or you met women at church. So anyway, since then, they have topless beaches and it's all changed. So I, I, um, I used to fly into Rome. Now I fly into Pisa because when I get off the train, it's a 45 minute train ride to get to Pietra Santa and a little longer to get to Carrara. So, and you can see that these hill towns are right on the water so you can work all day and then go down to the beach and go swimming. So in the upper right, you can see um, the town the city, actually it's Carrara nestled um, in the valley. And behind is um, mountains that look like they're covered with snow and they're really covered with marble. It's a phenomenal place. And then the lower right, 
are, uh, is a picture of the quarries. And when I was there in 2003, I was told that to get the pure white statuarial marble that is so valuable that they have to drive inside the mountain two miles or more to get access to it. So um, uh, let's go to the next slide. Whoop. Next slide. Ah, thank you. So here's an example of the mixture of the modern with the antiquities. So this is the piazza in Pietra Santa, and you can see that there's marble sculptures and there's marble is plentiful. And they use marble in ways you'd never imagine because that's their common medium. And so the it's hard to see, but there's that sort of square on its side and it's got laminated um, different kinds of marble. The one behind it is hard to see, it's, but it's um, these circular balls. He's a Korean sculptor. The one in the bottom right, that the scale, if you look, you can see the tower behind it. The scale is really high, uh, really big. It's taller than a person. And the white is a marble face surrounded by metal, uh, thin metal made into leaves. And so you see that there's this um, suggestion of the ancients uh, in the modern statement, statement and it's really inspiring. Oh, next slide, I think. Mm. So uh, here we go. So I, in 2018, I decided I would go over to Italy. I longed to go over. I hadn't been there for about 15 years. And I let the foundry, I worked in this foundry in 2003. And I let them know I was coming over. They sort of knew who I was. They called me Melania. I used to like that name, now I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, anyway. So when I showed up, I, I walked up, you walk out, out of Pietra Santa a couple of miles up the hill and came to their new location. And when I walked into the foundry, everybody recognized me. It was like coming home. And I felt like part of the family. It's just really wonderful. And um, so I, I worked to arrange that I would come on Monday and uh, the owner, Carlo, um, got someone to build me an armature so that I could get started on Monday. And I wanted to say that when you go to these Crara and Pietra Santa, there are sculptors from all over the world, from Korea, from Paris, from um, uh, Japan, Holland. It's just an amazing mix. And you all of a sudden are the representative of your country and your art is valued. It's just a, a wonderful feeling. When I was young, the first time I went over, um, I was this young aspiring sculptress and um, to be taken as an international sculptor while I was over there just made, made me feel so um, accomplished. And uh, we all hung out at the bars afterwards and, and talked. So um, this sculpture, here's another mixture of um, the ancient vocabulary and statement along with the a modern uh, expression. So I walked into the foundry yard and this was sitting outside the upper left. So it's a horse with the ribs along with it sitting in a boat and it's evocative of the Roman conquerors, the cavalry um, taking their ships and their arms across the Mediterranean to conquer distant lands. So it's just, it's a powerful statement. The lower right, there's a museum in Pietra Santa, and I found this um, photograph of the actual installation. So you get a sense of what it's all about. So I, when I go over there, I just work nonstop. And I was anxious to get started. And I had brought a little maquette and worked with the uh, armature uh, fabricator and got something going. So um, here's, Oops, I can't make it advance. All right, thank you. I keep thinking. Here's the piece I brought over to work on. 
well, it's in clay. What I brought was that little white maquette that's over at the bottom on the right. And um, I just, I, I usually have this feeling of the form I wanna create. I don't know exactly why. And I just let myself figure it out as I go. So on the left is what I started with on the armature. And I looked at it and I said, oh, I don't like this. It looks like a fish. So I, I pushed myself and I started taking risks with the, the uh, clay and everything. And I started to see these two forms coming from the top and merging. And as I worked, I decided it was like Genesis. It was the beginning and it was something coming out of a pod. And uh, I also like to make my pieces really smooth, but I've decided, eh, that's, you know, hard to make everything so smooth. I'm gonna just put the texture there. And I really got into this whole idea of taking a thumb full of clay and just sticking it up on the, the form. And I had a great time doing that. Sure, sorry, so, Melanie, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, nine minutes. Oh, so I'm all done? No, 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 please proceed. <laughs> we got extra time, I think, go ahead. Okay, so, all right, let's move to the, the next slide. So here is, Genesis um, with it um, completed in the clay. And um, I, I, had, I ate apples for lunch. And so all of a sudden it occurred to me if it's Genesis, it should have an apple to symbolize the yeah. Garden of Eden. I don't usually do literal things, but I, I did for this. So you can see both the front and the back. Okay, we can advance it. So then um, Carlo, coated the clay piece with a latex slip, which is on the left. And then he built it up with a thicker latex. And you can see those pink things are um, sort of their latex too, but they end up being keys or puzzle pieces. So when they make the plaster shell, the latex sits exactly where it should every single time. So um, next slide. Mm. And so here is um, Valerio. He's the partner with Carlo. He does a lot of the operations and he's taken the plaster shell and he's filling it by hand with the clay. I mean, with the wax so that he gets every detail. The um, Italian foundries are really wonderful craftspeople and they do a phenomenal job. So he's, he's making sure he's every detail. So, um, so we have the, we're going to make a, a wax positive. So he, then after he does all of that, he puts the two halves of the shell together. We can advance it once more. Mm. And you can see there's the shell together and he's working with um, Massimo to pour a, the molten wax into it, roll it around, and then spill out the extra wax to make a, a very thin positive wax inside. It's like if you had a, um, a glass with a milkshake and you rolled it around and the glass got coated with the milkshake. So that's what they do. Um, we can advance it again. So um, huh. here's, I don't know if we wanna take the time. There's a, a video of them opening up the mold and I'm, watching and it's just, I've got my, my um, heart in my mouth. I'm so anxious about what they're doing. Um, there it is. So that's Carlo and Valerio. And it, it's incredible to get so much attention to my work. And they wanted to open this up while I was still there. So if I had any questions or thoughts about changing it, you'll see. You know, when I have things cast in the States, they, this is the ancient way that they did it. But the foundries in the States, at least around here, make a ceramic shell. Um, it's uh, a little, it's different. And um, so you'll see them opening up the, the, uh, the, the uh, two sides and then massaging it out and uh, you begin to see that they pull it out. We don't have to watch the whole thing, but it's so cool when they pull it out. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can make it go near the end. So here it is, thanks. Here it is pulled out and uh, they do such a nice job. Someone is clapping and telling them bravo. So, and that's the sculpture in the, the wax positive. So I left that with them and then they cast it into bronze. And I don't know, people may know the lo lost wax process. They, they put that wax in a vat of plaster, melt it out and then where those hollows were from the wax, they filled out with bronze. That's why it's called lost wax. Anyway, so here's Genesis when it's complete. And they ship it to me and I'm never sure what it's gonna look like. And when I open up the crate, I am just astounded and um, usually so pleased with their, their work. And then on the right, I was showing it outside and I had a, um, a base of an aluminum disc created that um, is painted enamel. So that's, whoops, um, we can advance. The next slide, yeah. So then I thought I would show you a few of the pieces that I've created um, in Italy. So the piece on the left, Jonah, <clears throat> is Verona marble. When I went over, that was when I was 21, innocent, naive. The owner of the marble studio told me, you can't make a sculpture out of that marble. That's for bathtubs. <laughs> and he, he would come out every day and, pardon me, rub up against my sculpture. And I won't say anything more. But anyway, um, so I, I carved that myself. And this is a more sedimentary marble. So it would sometimes flake off they did the polishing and uh, they, I was there for three months making that. And then I didn't go to Italy for quite a while. I had to figure out a way to make a living. So I went back to school. And um, after I graduated from the business school, I rewarded myself by going back over and I had no idea what I'd find. So I brought a maquette. I didn't plan on working. Someone helped me find an artigiani, which is one of the skilled crafts people over there who would carve the piece for me, and he did. So um, the thing, I love the piece, it's very sophisticated, but I make my lines much softer, you'll see in the next piece. And the, yeah, the thing I started to like to play with is having the broad expanse of the front and back, and on the side having it very narrow, so your eye would weave through the forms um, on the when you look through the side. You can get a sense of it on the left. So this is Flora. They roughed it out for me. I carved the whole thing and they sanded it down. And I was amazed that came across the ocean on a boat. And that point where the two forms meet is about, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch um, thick or long. And it just, it, it's miraculous that it it made it, I've showed this piece a couple of times. I had a crate made for it. I showed it actually in Chesterwood in the 1980s. Um, okay, next slide. Mm. So here's another piece. Um, I got a commission for the Middleborough Public Library. They wanted a sculpture to commemorate their 150th centennial. They wanted something that expressed the arts, drama, literature, visual arts, uh, poetry. So I came up with this idea of a tree of knowledge and I, they had a very limited budget, uh, so limited that to install it, they had the people who own the graveyard install it for me. It was a real trip when they, they decided that they would use these clamps to pick it up. Oh, because it's okay to do that with a gravestone, but it made a mark. And I was there, I said, stop. I finally got them to use a strap to lift it up, to put it on the, the base. So I've had all sorts of adventures. Next slide. Mm. So this is the last one. And this I didn't do in Italy. This one I did up at the sculpture center, carving studio and sculpture center up in West Rutland, Vermont. And this is a piece of West Rutland marble. It's a, a quarter of someone else's block that they didn't want. And she sold it to me. It weighs um, over, over a ton, maybe even more. And I, used the marble, I just let it talk to me and I 
did what it was suggesting to make a form. I sometimes do abstract figures. And this is what came to me. It's um, called caryatid, like the, the Greek um, pillars on, on the Parthenon that hold up the, um, the roof. And so that's what she's called. And she welcomes people to this um, marketplace. I don't know if people have been up there in North Conway. The de developers were terrific. They decided they wanted to have different sculptures up there and commission them and did a really beautiful job. Marilyn Ewer orchestrated that. And um, I wasn't gonna put anything in because it would mean I'd have to get the piece done by a deadline, but I decided to do it. Um, and it took me two years because I couldn't carve it continually. And up in Vermont, you can't work out there in the cold. So um, anyway, it went in in 2018 and the veining people asked me about it. It looks like someone's evening gown. And on the left, you can see the dowel marks from where we split it, <coughs> the ancient way of putting in dowels and it just expands in a, and breaks it open. And on the right, you can see it had pink quartz in the back. It's a phenomenal piece of stone. And um, anyway, I, I am, I just am captivated by stone and fell in love with it when I was in my 20s. So that's, that's what's here, but I do um, have things cast in bronze. So that, um, this is it, you go to the next one. I think it says finito, <laughs> thank you. Any questions? Thank you for your patience and I appreciate oh, okay. it. Okay, no, that was tw about 20 minutes. That's fine, we got two people, so good. All right. Okay. Any quick question, one or two questions before we move on? Thank you. No, thank you. Mm. Yeah, I just want to say Carlo and Valerio have nothing on Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and Pelham is closer than Pietro Sante, but not quite as picturesque. Where? Pelham, New Hampshire. Oh, oh, Pete's place. He's yeah. Pete's yeah. place. Yeah. Pete's place. He's done wonderful th things for me and helped me too. And uh, Melanie, can I ask the cost of uh, Genesis? How, like, what did that whole thing cost you to get it done and shipped and everything? That's hard to say. I can give you some range because I created two other pieces. One of them is fairly substantial. Actually, the other piece is going to be up at uh, Eustace Estate. It's a female figure called Eve, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I can find the, the invoice he gave me. But um, I mean, the whole thing with the three pieces cost me about $4,000 and mm -hmm. then shipping on top of it and customs. Mm -hmm. So um, so that added maybe, you know, five, five something. But yeah, people, well, anyway, but- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that gives you an idea. The Museum, the Museum of Fine Arts used to have a trip to Pietrasante where you would sculpt and, uh, mm. and live there for, for, for weeks. Uh, they don't even do sculpture on, at the continuing ed school anymore at, oh. the, at the museum. Mm. Unbelievable. That, yeah, that's a shame. I took um, continuing ed there, uh, Morris, uh, Morris, wait, what's Norvin used to teach there. Morris is a member and yeah. his wife does the, she's got the glass blowing. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's- Ber a, Bernadette Diamore used to teach. She's the one right. who started the sculpture center in Vermont. Right, yes, yes. That's who I studied with, yeah. Oh, really? How nice, yep. yeah, I love her. Mm. Thank you for bringing that up, yeah. By the way, uh, uh, Morris is still te teaching over at Stony Brook at their place at Stony Brook Institute over in uh, Jamaica Plain area. Yeah. yeah he, I, just, I just talked to him yesterday, so. Oh, cool. He's got a small foundry that he, he uses, doesn't he? He has a small, his, you know, he does teaching there, studio, small foundry, et cetera. They're looking for more space. They're looking uh, for a new building that'll have um, artists live in studios. Um, more of those and more space for his operations. Mm. So that's, that's something that works. By the way, the place in Pietro Sanji, uh, what was the name of the studio? Um, Founderia uh, L'Arte, oh, it's at the beginning. 
um, let me, oh, anyway. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't oh, worry, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, go ahead. I'll get back to you. I was just wondering, because um, I spent a bit of time over at Studio Sem. Oh, yeah, I'm my piece floor, I did at Sem's. Yeah, they're lovely yeah. people, too. Oh, yeah, he's passed away. He passed away in um, 89, you know, when I was there. He would treat us like we were royalty. He would take us out to dinner and we'd meet his, the donors. It was phenomenal. I felt like I, I well, I was a, you know, renowned international artist, even though I wasn't. So, and he treated everybody like royalty. And I, I didn't, I didn't know, I wasn't there then, but I was there in 2010 and the gang that was there in 2010 were lovely. Yeah, Kira, she's, she was um, Sam's, uh, uh, office administrator and she's now running it and I have a National Geographic video where they go up to Pietro Santa and um, ha have an interview with Sam in it mm -hmm. and it's lovely mm. so um, yeah by the way the carving studio is open and they're having an open alumni week the first week in June so it's a, a wonderful, it is like a little bit of Italy in the States. And <laughs> so um, okay. I wanna let go, yeah. Thanks, Melanie. Thanks oh. for uh, the presentation and Thank the answer is very, very interesting. Um, yeah, can we <laughs> move to the next presenter? Uh, and this is uh, Roger. Roger, are you there available? You need I, actually, to I actually go by my middle name. Ah, okay, me? Doug. I go by Doug, yeah. Okay, and you tell me when to advance the slides. Uh, Let's advance start. Advance the slide, please. Okay. So my name is Douglas Rice. I'm a painter and sculptor. I live in Stonington, Connecticut. Uh, and I'm going to take you through sort of who my inspirations, my processes, and uh, you can see some of the finished pieces and where they've been exhibited. This is actually, uh, this piece here uh, was at a show in Watch Hill, Rhode Island. And it's a piece called Evolution, and the yellow one's called Canary. Next. So inspirations. Louise Bourgeois. This was at uh, Crystal Bridges in uh, Arkansas, if any, uh, Bentonville, Arkansas. If any of you have, not, if none of you have been there, you really should go. And Alice uh, um, Walton, who, you know, from Walmart family, she started this incredible museum of American art. Next. Calder. I love Calder for his shape, his boldness, his structure. Uh, and color, and you know, he's just one another one I admire. Next, Noguchi. Uh, my friend Jenny Dixon was head of the Noguchi Museum in New York, and so we got a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I just find his work so elegant, um, and you'll see in some of the ways that I make my stuff how things are slotted together. And that's he's been an influence in the way I uh, fabricate things. Next, uh, Desuvero, uh, structure. Boldness. I, I owned a construction company in Manhattan for 20 years. I built 300 very wealthy people's uh, homes. Um, I can tell you who some of them were, but uh, Denzel Washington told me that would be tacky. Um, that was a joke. Um, uh, DeSuvero, uh, I like using construction materials uh, from uh, my construction career. I got to know how to work with metal factories. Uh, I got to know how to work with marble yards. Uh, I, too, was in Carrera twice, not for sculpture, but for... Uh, uh, buying 24 slabs and three blocks and having bathtubs for my clients, carved uh, solid bathtubs carved out of blocks of uh, statues. Yeah. Next, Miro. I love Miro. To me, this is sculpture. Um, it's, it's the shapes, the whimsy, the way that different shapes interact with each other. They all inspire me. Next. So how do I start? I play. I play, I play, I play. I do collage. I get scissors and kitty construction paper, put things together. I'd probably have 50 of these collages just at any one time going. Uh, and it gives me ideas for shapes and how things can interact and how they can talk to each other. Next, ditto. If you see the ones in the right-hand corner, the three little things stacked on the things that look like little legs, those will show up later, I'll show you. Next, I make paper sculptures. I make everything start with a four inch by eight inch piece of paper because that way I can translate it and blow it up uh, to a four foot by eight feet sheet of plywood or a four foot by eight feet sheet of copper, which I can get on Amazon. Um, and I have an amazing tool. I used to do it with hand shears and I would just cut the hell out of my arms and hands. And I, a friend of mine gave me a tool. It looks like a little barber shaver. 
but it's these little snips and you can actually draw. You can make any kind of shape and curve or slot anything you want. And I slot them all together. If you look, they're all slotted together. So all of these things reinforce each other. Uh, and, um, no, you don't need bolts. You don't need things like that. Next. Again, more paper sculptures, giving me ideas on volume. Next. Here, this is a piece out of cardboard. This is how this started. And I loved it. So I took that, it was all out of four, four inch by eight inch pieces of cardboard. And I translated it next into plywood. I got AC plywood and I started cutting those shapes. Uh, this is uh, a young sculptor, a sculptor, Eden McDowell. Her father teaches at UConn in the art department. Um, and so she had, I'm now 69. It's harder for me to pick up four, three quarter inch sheets of plywood. So I get these people to help me. Next. Uh, that's it. I paint them with high gloss metal paint so that they actually look like steel. Next. And so when I get a show or exhibition, I take it to a factory in Groton and they will use a uh, water jet and cut it out of uh, five eighths uh, sheets of aluminum. Next. I then have it powder coated at another factory called J Pole. J Pro and they powder coat backboards for basketball hoops. And so yeah, go, go back to the last one just real quick. No, no, go, go the other way, go the other way, go to back. Yeah, when I walked into this factory, they were, they were in Groton, they were making a mock-up of a nose cone for a nuclear submarine. <laughs> I walked in with three of these giant wood pieces, all bright colors. And they're like, what the hell is this? And uh, I've developed a good relationship with them. They made a number of pieces for me now. Next. So this is part of the, go back, back, back there. This is part of the Hollycroft Foundation, which has 50 miles of sculpture from Guilford all the way to Stonington. Um, I think I have like five or six pieces with them in different towns on the southeastern, uh, southeast coast. I got them, I live in Stonington, I got the borough of Stonington to agree to make a wind fiber park behind the big artist colony called the Velvet Mill. They turned that park into a sculpture park. And the founder of Holycroft was a guy um, who was basically in hospice and uh, Bill Bennington. And I, I brought him to the meeting and I introduced him and he started sort of rambling. I thought, oh God, where are we going? And then he just went into the wonderful speech on how important art is the how important public art is in the fabric of a, a, a town. And he had the greatest closing line I've ever heard. He said, I hope you approve this before I die. And everybody said, yes. So that's Sculpture Parks now in its sec, uh, third year. Next, I just delivered it, thank you, Nessa, to the Fuller Craft Museum. Um, it's, and I'm, uh, I'm there with Linda, in the same terrace with Linda Hoffman and the incomparable Madeline Lord. Uh, this is called Random Bell. Next. So I showed you some of these collages. This is, uh, you know, the top, the bottom of the largest piece is the top of this one, uh, the deck size, and they, they just come out of each other out of a four foot by eight foot sheet or four inch by eight inch sheet. Next. So this is evolution. I had it made out of two four foot by eight foot sheets of aluminum, uh, five, uh, three quarter inch aluminum and had it powder coated. This is in front of the Westerly train station. And it's called evolution because they actually evolve from each other. You know, as I said, each of the pieces fits in. So when I go to the, they're very easy for me to transport or design them that I and two people can just load them onto a, a single pickup truck. They slot together two pieces. It can, this whole thing can be put together in about 25 minutes with two people. Um, next. So more, more process. Here's a paper sculpture, next. This is called Holy Miter, pun intended. It's uh, painted steel. Next. Here is uh, another paper sculpture. Next. This is out of a four foot by eight foot sheet of copper. That's in a private collection. Next. Uh, thinking of the Subaru, this is called Angel's Wings. And it's made out of uh, six pieces of two by 12 that are 16 feet long each. Uh, take a jigsaw. And I just sort of shape the edges and then uh, put them all together. And I installed it in the second week of the of COVID pandemic uh, isolation. The train station is now the uh, artist co-op gallery of Westerly. Uh, the train station was abandoned by Amtrak and it's now a cooperative gallery. Um, and this is, I think, the third sculpture I've had on this lawn. And I called it Angel's Wings because it reminded me of just 
you know, of angles, and then ang angles made me think of angels, and then I thought, well, you know, hope flies in the wings of angels, and so I sort of gave it that name, and next, the Westerly paper liked it, you know, that this sort of sign of hope. Next. Uh, this is called Owl. It's two pieces that just slot together from one fourth of the piece. This was at the Crane Estate last year. Next. And now it's the uh, opening piece at the Art Fran uh, Franconia Art Walk in Franconia, New Hampshire. We just installed it last week. And again, my wife and I rented a, a pickup truck from Enterprise. And I had to got, we, it, they, they lie flat. She drove two hours, I drove two hours and uh, stayed, spent the night and installed it there. Next. Uh, this is called Canary. This was at uh, Linda Hoffman's uh, uh, old frog pond farm a couple of years ago. Next. And this is this this is now installed in the sculpture park in Stonington. They had a really nice opening there. Um, there are 12 different sculptors in the park that, and it's curated by Brian Wendler, who is now after Bill Bendig died, he's become the president of the Holy Cross Foundation. I'm sorry to intrude, Doug, but that's that's nine minutes. Okay. Next. Uh, this is a private piece called Cobalt. Um, this was actually uh, pieces that I got from Holy Croft after they made the first three. And I basically uh, screwed them in, and slotted them together and then had uh, J-Pro powder coat them. Next. Uh, this is Evolution 2. I had a whole other series of the red ones made and had them powder coated blue and yellow. And those are different places now. There's one in Madison, there's uh, one in, where else? Uh, in Guilford. Next. This is the largest, larger version of that. Um, I, I took out the slide because I thought it would be restricted with time. But when the red one was there and it was going up to Franconia, I, I went over there at night and took one of the red pieces out and put a blue one in. And on the next side, took out a red one, put a yellow in, and then put on Instagram that it was mutated until finally re the red one was gone and this is all that's left. And I just put, yikes, it, it's eaten with the red evolution. I thought it was funny. Next. This is a piece that's going to the Eustace Museum. Um, and it's, a, it's, uh, it's one of two in a series. It's called Solidarity. Uh, it is absolute, honed absolute black granite. And I, I was inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement. And so um, it's very solid. And with the pieces cut out, they all come together in unity uh, in the, with the circles uniting. Again, it's slotted. The one thing that uh, I wasn't aware of is that each four foot piece weighs 300 pounds. And luckily I had two wonderful guys who delivered it. I had it fabricated at a marble yard here in uh, Waterford, Salem Stone. And these two wonderful gentlemen delivered it and were able to just lift it up and slot it down. So this is going to Eustace, uh, I think at the end of June, they put it back. And then its sister uh, is going to the gallery of University of Connecticut at AB Point uh, beginning of June. Uh, next. This is uh, called On the Road. Jack Kerouac wrote On the Road uh, on a hundred foot piece of newsprint, one continuous roll where he just kept typing and typing. So this is a hundred feet of aluminum, all continuous, which I used that little, you know, that cutting tool and then, uh, uh, um, you know, screwed it all together. This was uh, on exhibit at the Brush Gallery in Lowell. And then when I went to pick it up, next, I stopped at Kerouac's grave and had a 10-minute uh, exhibition of On the Road at Jack's grave. <laughs> Made me laugh. Next. Uh, here's Evolution 3. This is a, a third version of this, which is now, this is a medium size. The tallest one is four feet. And this is at the Fells Estate. We just installed it a couple weeks ago. Next. Uh, this is, again, uh, part of the sculpture trails. This is down in Madison. Next. And this, this is uh, Evolution 4, which is uh, two feet. The, the tallest one is two feet. And this is going to Old Frog Pond in July. And that's it. Thank you. Next. You can see my work on Instagram. Um, if you're interested in painting, um, I, us I usually would have artists come and sit for me. And I have a series of maybe 20 full-size portraits of painters sitting in these beautiful Danish chairs that I have. And when no one could come, I put a call out on Instagram 
for the first 50 people that send me a selfie, I do 50 portraits by June 30th. I got 126 responses and I painted all 126 within a year of lockdown. Um, I've now screwed them together into uh, 12, of, 12 at a time, four, uh, three, three up and four across. Uh, so they're like six foot by six foot combines. And uh, I've entered them in some competitions and I have a couple of proposals into museums. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But you can see all of those uh, on Instagram. And that's it. Well, thanks a lot. Any questions, guys? Well, just an observation, I guess. Uh, the, uh, the Doug, those are really very, very interesting and uh, often very beautiful. But the evolution ones in particular, it strikes me that they seem inspired by uh, the, the big spider by Louise Bourgeois. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, I also call them evolution for a couple of reasons. One, right. they literally evolve out of each other. Right. They also, I think Linda is going to have me have the smallest one coming out of the water. So they look to me like creatures that are sort of right. evolving, you know, right. uh, throughout history. Right. And, you know, sort of the last few years with all the attacks on science, I, I like putting something out there that validates science. Right. right. Yeah, good. Thank you. But the slotting definitely comes from the Gucci, you know, the idea. But it also comes from my right. construction background and not wanting to have to hire cranes. And, and you know, mm. when I when I got random vowel to the uh, Fuller Craft Museum. John, who I guess is head of, head of uh, installation and maintenance there, I had the, a truck bring it there and he says, well, where is it? We opened the truck, he goes, I don't see it, where is it? I said, there's eight pieces leaning against the wall. You know, right. and he said, well, how are you gonna get it in? I said, we're just gonna walk right through the door. And he was amazed by that. Yeah. No, it's- uh, It made it easy. I think we had installed the whole thing in like 15 minutes. Oh, that's very smart, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else? Okay, I just wanted to say it's so delightful to see your delight. Yeah, exactly. That too. Yes. Enjoy it doing what you do. Thank you. I, I come from. Uh, I have great genes. My folks were some of the most positive people you ever meet. Not, I grew up with Madeline Lord and so We knew each other's families. Hi. I, I think it would be fun to play with paper. I think you know Nisa could open up a lot of. Um, heads of people who've been stuck carving or welding or um, shaping with clay and just make them take two dimensional, eight by 10, 12 by 20 paper, curl it up and slot it together just to release some steam out of your sculpture body. I just think whether you went with it forever or just for the moment, I think it, it's a wonderful process to open yourself up and release and then we could all take a sauna. I, I find that uh, often I'll do that with a glass of scotch and a cigar. That seems to open me up a little bit. <laughs> anyway. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It's nice to see you all. Well, you're very welcome. And thank you, everybody, for uh, attending. If you have any comments, suggestions, um, propose uh, how to further improve it and make it uh, better for everybody, uh, drop, us, drop us a note and uh, we'll, we'll put our thinking cap and uh, try to maintain it and try to find a better time for everybody. But um, for now, I, I was very pleased with what, uh, what uh, we've seen. Uh, we have a lot of talents, and I wish more people would come and share their talents, but this is something that we need to work on. Right. So thank Vinny, you. Vinny, thank you so much, and everybody else who worked No, on. thanks, and Doug. And You're very Melanie. welcome. Melanie, it's great to see your work. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Have a great so, Melanie, weekend, guys. Great to see your work as well. Thank you. Thanks to all. Thank you, guys. Bye, all. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Marilyn. Hi. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you all. Indeed. Good seeing you. Thanks.